Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar looking at color correction inside Final Cut Pro 10. With the release of Final Cut Pro 10, Apple totally changed the way that they do color correction. They've moved from a YUV space to an RGB space, and they've given us an entirely different set of tools to work with. What I want to do in this session is to give you an overview of what those tools are, how to put them to work, both the automatic and the manual tools, so you can make your images look great. Before we start, though, let me define a couple terms. Color correction is designed to fix problems with your images. Color grading is designed to give your images a specific look. It's impossible in one one-hour session to talk about both of these, so for this session, I want to talk about color correction, how to fix problems with our images. My goals for today are to show you how to analyze a clip for color problems, illustrate the automatic color correction tools in Final Cut Pro 10 show you how to display and read the four main video scopes, and show you how to make manual color corrections. In order for automatic color corrections to occur, we have to analyze the clip. Now we can analyze during import or when dragging a clip from the finder into the event browser or into the timeline. We can also, and this is my recommendation, analyze clips after selecting the clip in the event browser. Analysis takes time, and a lot of times analysis is not necessary. What my recommendation is, is that you analyze all audio clips, but don't analyze video clips until you need that specific clip analyzed for excessive shake or rolling shutter, or in this case, color problems. Keep in mind that it is not necessary to analyze a clip for color before color balancing. You see, automatic analysis looks at the entire clip. Manual analysis looks at the frame the playhead is parked on, and if no frame is selected, then Final Cut uses the frame at the middle of the selected clip. By default, if a clip has been analyzed and color correction is needed, color balance is turned off for clips in the browser and turned on for timeline clips. Since the order that you color correct your clips matters, my recommendation is to use this workflow for automatic color correction. First, balance the color. Second, if necessary, match the color between two shots. Third, if necessary, manually color correct a clip to get it more accurate. And fourth, also, if necessary, apply the broadcast safe filter. I'll walk you through all of these steps today. So let me show you how to analyze a clip to automatically correct for color balance and how to match the color between shots. Here's some uh, train footage. By the way, I'm grateful to Miles and Fran Hale with Model Railroad Builders. I've been in love with model trains all my life, and they were off busy shooting some train footage for me and talking about the way they build scenery for model railroads. We'll talk more about that in my upcoming training and upcoming books, but I almost didn't get the book written. I was too busy watching trains move around on the screen. I've got the trains coming out of a tunnel. Nice, rich colors. We cut to the second shot. The shot is correct, but the color's very blue-green. Kind of dark, kind of listless. So let's take a look at how we can make the second shot look like the first shot. Well, the first thing that we want to do is to balance the color. Notice the black levels are a little elevated, the white levels are a little low, and it's definitely got a blue-green cast. So we select the clip that we want to adjust. There's several different ways that we can balance the color, but probably the easiest is to go to the Enhancement menu, which is this magic wand here. And the very first choice says Balance Color. Keyboard shortcut is Option, Command, B. Now watch the viewer. When I click this option, three things are going to happen. The black level is going to get richer, darker. The image itself is going to brighten, and the color cast is going to go away in two, one, woof. Look at that. A brighter image, the color cast is reduced, and our train engine is definitely much redder than it was before. Redder, but it still doesn't match. Notice the vibrancy of this image versus this one's a little not quite the same. Closer, but not identical. So the next step is to match the color. Again, select the clip, go up to the Enhancement menu, and choose the second choice called Match Color keyboard shortcut is Option, Command, M. When we select Match Color, it pops up a dialog. It says, what frame do you want us to match? The, the clip that we have selected is the one whose color needs to be improved, the one that we want to change. 
Now we need to find a frame that we like that we want to have a change the color to. And it doesn't have to be the frame in the timeline. I could select this, but what I've learned is if there's large proportions of black or white in the screen, it screws up the color correction. So I want to find a different clip. So I'm going to go up to the event library, go to my model railroad footage, and scroll up until I find a shot, there it is, where the train is crossing a bridge. This has got the warm daylight sunshine color that I'd like the train to have. So I'm going to click on this clip in the event browser. Watch the clip on the right, which is the clip we're going to change, in two, one, click. It's now got a much warmer cast. Yes, it could be said that it's a little bit too warm, but now as I play this clip going from one to the other, I've got to click Apply Match and play this clip. Notice that the warmth of the two shots now matches between the clips. 